Semi, 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 semi. Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again. Sorry, guys. Um, you know, I've been in and out of the, the, the channel and stuff like that. I haven't been making the videos lately as much as I normally would have. I apologize for that. I've just been having a lot of things I've been trying to take care of in my personal life, you know, as far as, you know, getting things together. But most of you guys know, you know, what I'm trying to do and things of that nature as far as, um, you know, getting things better on my end so I can get back to, you know, having my own again and, and, and making my channel even bigger and better. Because that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about, you know, um, making sure that, you know, I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm doing what I need to do. I hope everybody out there is doing well um, and things of that nature. So um, for, for my channel members as well, um, you know, I didn't forget about y'all. I'm still going to be doing, I'm trying to do it this weekend. Um, but I'll send a message in the chat um, so for just for you guys for us to do our another private live stream. And those of you that um, do want to become channel members, um, just hit the, the the tab on the front of the channel where it says um, join, and you can pick your tier. Um, so as far as Dallas Cowboys, um, you know, the Cowboys had rookie mini camp this past week. And um, i just been, you know, just been watching and listening to um, some of the interviews and stuff like this. I, I look at this draft class and I, I feel a little better about it than I did initially when uh, some of these guys first got drafted. Because, you know, naturally, you don't know what these guys are going to do until you start seeing them on the field. You start seeing them move around. And you got to understand with COVID, some of these guys opted out last year, including our first round draft pick, Micah Parsons. Um Micah himself, you know, a whole year out, hasn't done, you know, different drills and, and, and hitting dummies for like a year and a half since, you know, he was practicing with Penn State. So, you know, a lot of these guys just need a little bit of refreshers. You know, rookie minicamp nowadays is more so walkthroughs, um, just understanding the position that, that Dan Quinn wants to put him in. And this is the time well that was the portion where Dan Quinn got to get to these guys get in their face and basically just um get that one-on-one -on -one time with these players especially the defensive tackle um Quinn Bohana now I'm gonna talk about you know these draft picks how they did what I think they're gonna do um and just the position that they're probably gonna be able to do these Dallas Cowboys now you look at the guys that got drafted this year I feel like they're going to push a lot of the draft picks from last year to work even harder. And and that's what it's all about. You want to create competition in every position. You don't want your veterans out there saying, oh, well, I, I, I got it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got to worry about nobody taking my spot. So I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. No, 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 no. You don't want nobody to get comfortable. You want these guys to be out here battling every day. Rookie, sophomore, a second-year guy all-time vet whatever the situation may be they need to get him in there i am a little sad that the cowboys didn't resign joe looney though i really like joe looney more so as a person like he just i feel like he's just awesome for the team he just he creates that positive energy around you know the team and i speak on this all the time when i talk about positive energy he brings that every day with this team and i don't know maybe they might bring him back in later if if uh, injury happens you lord and behold but cuz we know injuries are inevitable but i really like joe looney and 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 i like the fact that he could play center he could play guard he's versatile as well but this video is more about the younger guys so let's get into it now i'm going to talk about these guys not necessarily in their draft order but just how i i, I wrote my notes down um, so I'm going to start with uh, our fifth round draft pick, um, Simi Fehoku. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard me during the draft when these guys got drafted. I was like, damn, we picked a lot of guys that got hard last names to say. <laughs> and I kept saying, I said, Mark going to have trouble saying these guys' names, y'all. <laughs> so, I don't know if y'all were there when I said it, but I was just joking. But it was funny, though. Um, but Simi, Simi, Fehoku, Simi Fehoku. Fehoko, whatever, uh, fifth round pick uh, out of Stanford. Um, one thing about him and what he showed in practice, now he's definitely a, uh, um, he reminds me of C.D. Lamb only in, in the aspect of the quick feet and being able to um, get long yardage on, on the, 
th those reception yards. You know, um, he had what he averaged 18 yards per per catch when he was at Stanford. Now, granted, when he was at Stanford, remember, he's a little older. He's already 24 years old. Um, he was a late bloomer because he, I think he did like two years over in Africa, I think, doing a mission retreat for, for, the, for the church. So, you know, shout out to him for that, though. You know, um, I'm, all, I'm all with the missions. You know what I mean? Like, like you know, get it done. You know, I, I'm, I'm with that. I'm not mad at that at all. So, but he only played 22 games with Stanford. But in that small facet, you can see what he could bring to the table to the next level. Now, is he ready to be in the starting lineup right now? No, I don't think so. And everybody, I keep hearing people say, oh, well, is he going to take Michael Gallup's spot? No, Michael Gallup is a monster. And I don't know why everybody keeps saying Michael Gallup is not going to be here. People keep saying his, his dollar amount is going to be next year. Don't be surprised, guys, if the Dallas Cowboys say fuck it and re-sign um, Gallup in training camp this year. Do not be surprised if they do that because they might can do that. And I'm going to tell you right now, you could go back to this video. What's today? May, May, what is it today? 17th, 18th, May 18th? Come back, to, come back to me today on May 18th on this video. And I said it here first. Don't be surprised if Dallas Cowboys re-sign Michael Gallup in training camp this year. Now, I'm not saying that they will. I'm saying don't be surprised if they do. And if they do, you already know which wide receiver is not going to be here next year after after his contract is up. And that will more likely be Amari Cooper. Now, we love Amari Cooper. We love his presence. We know that teams respect him as the number one receiver on this team. But I think that if there was a situation between him and Michael Gallup, I believe that Amari Cooper probably wouldn't be here anymore because they have no more to spend on him. You remember, Michael Gallup, I mean, as much as we love Amari Cooper, he has issues with plantar fasciitis. He has issues with his legs and ankles and stuff like that. So he's an older guy, so, you know, compared to these other players. So I think that if anybody's going to be gone, it's probably going to be Cooper and then Michael Gallup and, and Michael Gallup and – um CD Lamb and then Fajoko is going to be there. And then they'll draft whoever else in the future. So I think that's how that will go. Um, more so. I don't think Gallup's going anywhere. I think they'll be stupid to actually get ready Gallup. Now, do I think Gallup can be a number one? Not necessarily. But he can definitely be, if you put him in a situation like how he is right now, where he has other guys around him that, that are just as good as him or better, I think he'll he'll survive. But if you're asking him to be the guy, the number one, then no. It don't matter what team he's on. You know, it, it, it's going to be the situation where he can be that strong number two, 1.5 kind of kind of receiver. But, yeah, but that's that. So, as far as Simi, he'll probably be on special teams for right now and then work his way up. He might take um, – it's possible he could take Noah Brown's spot um, on, the, on that roster. Then he'll be the fifth behind um, Cedric um, Wilson, because Cedric Wilson has a spot because you've seen the rapport that he has with D uh, Dak Prescott and those two touchdowns that he got against the Washington football team. So look out for that. Um, with this offense, with Dak Prescott being healthy, it's going to be dynamic as hell, no matter what you do with it. So I just look at it like I'm not even worried about the offense at this point. And you've seen Ezekiel Elliott working out this summer. That boy is letting y'all know right now, this ain't this ain't what you thought it was. He had COVID last year and and all that other stuff going down. And y'all think that Ezekiel Elliott suck? A lot of y'all gonna be eating crow next year because of that. <laughs> um, our number one draft pick, Micah Parsons, linebacker. Um, pick number one, pick number seven, I mean twelve, because we went back two spots in the first round. Now, one thing about him, we know he's ultra athletic. Um, he's a sideline, a sideline wide receiver. I mean, linebacker. Um, he's hybrid in the same way that Jalen Smith and Leighton Vander Esch is, but but better. You know what I mean? Um, he's an athlete just like they are. Like I feel like if Jalen never had that drop foot issue and Leighton Vander Esch never had neck issues, I think that this linebacker core, with three of them being healthy, including Micah Parsons probably the best linebacker tandem in the fucking league excuse my french um but the fact that he does that and more 
He he's he's a blitz he's a blitzing linebacker and he's a tackling machine. Like he reminds me of <laughs> myself when I play now. Mike is obviously better than me, but I'm just saying like I was similar to him when it came to tackling. Like I didn't play no games. I I was I was like that water boy. <laughs> See ball, get ball. Tackle that mother sucker. That's that's pretty much what it is. Um our second round draft pick, Kelvin Joseph, cornerback, um, picked in the second round, 44th pick out of Kentucky. Now, a lot of people say Kelvin Joseph, you know, is raw. People get on him because he, he wants to have a rap career. Let me tell you something. Do you know how many football players in this league do other shit? Why? I don't understand why was that even an issue. They act like that they're putting this before their job. And people can have hobbies. Okay, I'm a YouTuber. I have a regular job and I roller skate. It's hobbies. It doesn't interfere with what you do in your regular job. Football is a job for them. I don't know why people are judging him for that. Judge him on what he does on the field, not that he that he has a rap career. Cole Beasley's a rapper too, and he's still a great wide receiver. I love Cole Beasley. So, what the... F does that have to do with the price of tea in China? You know what I'm saying? Like, it just it to me it's just it's just it's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, but with Kelvin Joseph, I, he he is definitely a scrappy player. Um, I think that you know he's a little raw though. But I think that with some coaching under Dan Quinn, he can definitely be that second corner out there opposite of uh, Trayvon Diggs um, going forward. So you know once he learns the playbook and gets comfortable out there, and I think he'll be able to ride it out um, because he's going to be there on the ball, um, able to you know high point the ball with the receiver and things of that nature, and um, contest the pass. So that's what you need in your in your cornerbacks. So that's that on that. So the next one is Quentin Bahana, our sixth round pick, um, pick 192, also from Kentucky. Um, Quentin Bahana, he has one mother freaking job to sit in that that one technique, just eat up those blocks, just contain both the center and the guard, and get both the center and the guard in there, holding him in place right here, right there. So the ends. And the linebackers can eat all day. That is his number one job. Now, granted, if he could give you some, provide some pressure, like Sue did, and 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 be able to rush the passer here and there sometimes, that's cool. I'm cool. But I don't need him to get sex. What we need him to do is be a space eater, a refrigerator with arms like he is, 325 pounds. What is he, six five? Yeah. Get your big butt in there. Stop the run, because ain't nobody running up in that jump. Pop! Oh, shit. I didn't hit. God damn it. He big. Oh. Damn. I don't, I don't think I'm running up there no more. I don't, I don't, I don't think I'm running up that, that middle no more. I think I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> he going to make them running backs think twice. So, um, he's one of the ones that I was saying that, that Dan Quinn was working one-on-one -on -one with. So, that, that works out great. Um, finally, we drafted a one technique. Like, finally, they figured that shit out. You got to stop the run. And I'll tell you what I think about that in the end. So, but the Cowboys did sign four of these guys so far. So they signed Simi, they signed Quentin, they signed Israel, and they signed our seventh round pick, Matt Farniak. So, yeah. So next is Israel Mukuamu. Mukuamu. <laughs> Sixth round pick, uh, pick number 227 out of South Carolina. Mind you, he played opposite of J.C. Horn. So he was out there with the number one draft pick, J.C. Horn, um, that went to that went to the Panthers. Now, J.C. Horn is, 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 a, is a good player. And, you know, Israel being out there with him, I know Israel, you know, went much later in the draft, but I think Israel might be a steal, though, because – they got him because he's a Richard Sherman type of player. You know what I mean? Like tall, long arms, rangy guy that can come in and um, high point the ball. Put the put the straps on you. Put the handles on you. 
when that when that receiver is trying to get off of his release and and you're go go gadgeting this guy and you jamming him in his chest wide receiver can't do nothing if he's a lesser wide receiver he ain't gonna do nothing against a guy like israel him being six four he has ball skills sticky hands he can get his hands on the ball and um and he's a cornerback and safety type player. Basically, he can play. He's 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 a safety that can play in coverage like a cornerback. And that's what you want out of your guys. Um, Israel's a little raw as well. That's why he was picked in the sixth round. It's the reason why he went later. Um, he has some refining to do. His feet are a little sloppy sometimes. You know, watching him out there, you know, from him switching from um, a back pedal to a forward run. That transition's got to get a little more smoother because if it's a speed guy, he's going to blow right by him. So I think that he just needs to work that out, work some technique out, and I think Israel Mukuamu is going to be all right. Um, Our seventh round pick, which is, was our last pick in the draft, pick 238, Mac Farniak out of Nebraska. Now, you know, both Nebraska and Wisconsin do two things. Well... I know they do one thing really well. They Both of those schools produce really good offensive linemen. So if you draft somebody out of Nebraska that's an offensive lineman or Wisconsin, understand that offensive lineman might come out to be good. I think that Matt Forniak might actually be better than what a, a seventh-round draft pick is. Now, granted, he was picked in the seventh round for a reason because he, he's, a, he's a little, you know, he's got to strengthen up a little bit. He's just got to get a little stronger. But I think that Matt Farniak, because he can play every position on the offensive line, he has position flex. And that's going to help whenever we have injuries because you could put him damn near virtually anywhere and plug him in. Now he's going to have to learn and be comfortable with these positions, which is going to be kind of a hard transition for him, which he might start on a practice squad. But he'll be able to practice at different positions. And by the time that he gets built up enough to get to that point, he'll be all right. <sighs> Um, Osa Odigizua. Now, when they drafted him, I was like, okay, we got a, we got a, we got a three technique here, right? We got a three technique defensive tackle, um, in the third round, pick number 75, energetic, strong, lengthy, and he has, his first step is quick. Um, I think with them signing him, you could kiss the Gerald McCoy thing goodbye because that's basically your Gerald McCoy right there, the younger version, the younger, healthy version of your Gerald McCoy. Um, watching him out there, just seeing him do the drills and things of that nature, like I said, it's just rookie minicamp, but you know these, these defensive guys are looking really good. Now, these offensive linemen, it's hard to really gauge an offensive lineman without pads on because they're not really doing a whole bunch out there. It's it's really predicated more on the defense. Um, but, yeah. So, for Osa, I think that he's going to be really good out there. He's going to be able to push. He He's, he's going to push. Um, uh, what's, what's the kid's name that we had drafted last year? Um, not Neville Gallimore, but... Um, But I mean, even even you look at Neville, you look at Tristan Hill. Um, he he's gonna push these guys to play even harder because again, he's coming for these guys' positions. So, you know, it's gonna be a very interesting training camp, guys. Uh, Jabril Cox, linebacker out of LSU, fourth round, pick number one fifteen. One thing about him, that was a steal in 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 the um, in the fourth round. Get a Jabril Cox. Cowboys said that they had him on his radar the whole time, but he has that speed, athleticism, and he could play in coverage. Now, Micah Parsons is not really a coverage guy. He's more so of a see ball, get ball type of guy. You know, to get to get to hit the running back, blitz the quarterback, things of that nature. Getting around sideline to sideline. But meanwhile, you could put Jabril Cox in coverage and he could play the tight end. He could play the running back that's going out in the flat or on a wheel route or on a screen play or something like that. That's what you could use Jabril Cox for. And I think that uh, he and he he was one of the guys that got uh, interception in practice, too. So um, good for him on that one. Um, the next one is Chauncey Golston. Defensive end. I really like this pick. Um, round three, pick number 84 out of Iowa. Long arms. Long arms. 
Um, he's probably going to be pushing uh, Dorrance Armstrong for his position. So some people will say, why is Dorrance, Dorrance still here? Apparently, some of these coaches on his team still love Dorrance. So we'll see how that goes. But Chauncey Golston is definitely going to be pushing him for that spot. And he's got the right attitude. I, I like this kid. I really do. Um, now, this next guy, um, a lot of people have been, like, when he got picked, they was like, oh, he got picked too high in the draft. He should have been in the fifth round or something like that. Now, Sean Wright, cornerback, uh, picked third round, picked number 99 um, out of Oregon State. A lot of people said he should have been in the fifth or maybe the sixth round. Um, this is the guy that said that he – referred himself to a better Richard Sherman, even though he clarified that and everything with Richard Sherman himself. You know, basically saying, look, I'm not better than you. I just idolize you. I feel like I model my game after you. I'm, I'm a student of the game, basically what he's saying. But Nashawn Wright, though, um, he showed out in um, rookie minicab. But he also got an interception as well. And, um, ooh, he was putting the clamps on, on Semi Fahoku and these other uh, – undrafted receivers and I'll talk about them in another video but yeah he was putting the clamps on him he putting that hand out there stopping their releases they weren't able to get nothing done so um if Nashawn Wright can play like that with these veterans and keep up with these veterans like that oh he that might have been a steal as well so um and I know that a lot of people are gonna have an egg on their face and be like well I didn't think Nashawn Wright was going to do as well as he did, and he did. So, but we'll see. Like I said, it's just rookie minicamp. Um, that doesn't, you know. But some of these guys may not play good in practice, but they might be gamers. And I think that Simi Fahoku is one of those guys. He's not a great practice guy, but he's a gamer. When the lights come on, he's going to show and prove. Um, the last one I have is Josh Ball, offensive tackle out of Marshall, fourth round, one thirty-eight. Um, he was he got a lot. Of, the Cowboys got a lot of flack for picking him because. You know, there was news that came out that he um, uh, physically assaulted his girlfriend or something like that. They got into altercation, blah, blah. Um, I don't know the whole story, so I, I can't really, you know, sit here and say, oh, he's a bad guy. I don't want him on my team. But, you know, the, the days of Jason Garrett are gone. We're not picking guys that are um, great guys anymore. Now, granted, if he did do that, shame on him. He shouldn't be. But. You know, I think that everybody deserves a second chance. You know, you got to understand these guys are young. They're in school. They're athletes. There's a lot of pressure on them. So um, if if he doesn't do anything like that again and he and if, and if that's behind him, I'm cool with it. I think that Josh Ball, I like I like him. Um, he, 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 he'd be a good backup uh, swing tackle. He definitely could play the left or right tackle position. Um, he's very strong. Um, and I like what he brings to the table as well. He's got that strength, and he could definitely um, hold that, hold his own. So you look at all 11 of these picks, and I'm going to tell you right now, um, everybody keep asking, how many of these guys are going to make the team? Shit, I hope all of them. Even if maybe two or three of them end up being on the practice squad, I'm fine with that, as long as they're still on the team. But I think that this class right here is going to push last year's class to a different level because these guys are good and these guys are athletes. They 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 drafted athletes this year. So they drafted guys basically that's going to fit this scheme that Dan Quinn is trying to do. So I'm not mad at that. Sorry for the video being too long, guys. I just wanted to just get through this because I haven't got a chance to do a video in like a week because um, I've been having a lot going on in my personal. But, but I just wanted to get this information out to you um, from my standpoint. So with that being said, y'all, like, share, subscribe to the channel. Support your boy because I feel like y'all ain't even watching me no more. My, my numbers are horrible. I don't know what's going on. But, you know, I spent a lot of time on trying to get this content out. So, you know, support me and I'll support you guys as well, man. I love y'all. It's your boy, YouTube Blue, always keeping it real.